y'all know y'all owe Michael an apology, right? <laughs> not all of y'all. Not not all of y'all. Most of y'all owe Michael an apology. The way that y'all were all up in the comments, I would never wear no man that got a kind of tiara on, and he looked too feminine, and I don't know. Some of y'all did the most, okay? On top of the fact that some of y'all think that his crown was a tiara. Why y'all don't know the difference? Why y'all don't know the difference? Nonetheless, it's really Married at First Sight's fault for making us think that he brought this stuff in on his own accord. But some of y'all, I ain't gonna point no fingers. Some of y'all owe Michael an apology, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. Married at First Sight. We are in Denver, Season 17, Episode 2, Rocky Mountain Romance. If you are brand new to the channel, I break down TV shows one recap at a time, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, and theories into each and every recap. So, if you enjoy that type of content, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If if you're a returning viewer from last season or Love is Blind or Love Island or The Ultimatum or Ready to Love or any of the other shows that I do, you have not yet subscribed. Super close to 19,000 subscribers. So y'all please go ahead, hit that subscribe button. I want to get to 20,000 by the end of the year. That is my goal. That's my goal. All right. So if you haven't already hit that subscribe button, thumbs up the video if you like it. Hit, um, and then hop in the comment section so we can talk about everything that happened, all right? So, first things first. Um, Becca and Bre um, Emily, Lord. Emily and Brandon. Y'all need a little reminder how these people look? Let me put them up here. Let me move. Let me move this. Okay, so Emily and Brandon. They got these people outside in the snow. Y'all know it's Colorado. It's cold. It's snow on the ground. They can see their breath. <laughs> So you know what's cold. I said, Emily, you need a sleeve on, sis. Y'all know if y'all been following me for a while, I I I'm big on having the sleeve about the uh, about the arm. Okay, I don't go nowhere without a sleeve. You know why? Cause it it be cold. So they finally get them some coats. She had a little little fur situation. Probably she in fashion over. It didn't look like it was you know. You know, it didn't look like it was. <laughs> Okay, um, but they get out there and they are both each other's types, um, physical wise, right? So she was like, we got to, you know, we got to do a little more talking so I can see how, how the inside is, sir. But as of now, as of right here, they're compatible. So she asked him if his, if his family likes to party. He said, well, I'm Russian. Okay. So my dad hydrates with vodka. I said, I know that's right, sir. <laughs> Because the Russians like vodka, okay? They make some of the best vodka, too. If you're looking for a vodka, go get you a Russian one. Don't do the Ciroc because it did he and all them. Go find you a nice, strong Russian vodka. Them the ones. So... She had to, uh, the, like, she kind of looked taken aback by that, but then was like, but I'm the party animal in my family. Girl, so why you make a face at him that his daddy likes to drink? Whatever. So she's asking him if he has a pet. She was hoping he had a dog. He said, we can get one together. Whoa, we're doing too much. We're doing too much. Y'all may not even make it past the, past the little honeymoon, but they both want a sheep -a doodle now, I don't know what that is, but when I went to go Google it, an article popped up on the top seven reasons not to get a sheep -a doodle So, <laughs> I don't know what type of shade that was to them dogs, but that's what popped up for me. So, we then get to Becca and Austin. Let's give a refresher on them. All right, so we get to Becca and Austin. And they are doing their dress and tux shopping. I appreciate how fast this went. I appreciate how fast we breezing through this because we don't really need a lot. You know what I mean? So she doesn't want a traditional dress. She can't have anything that's tight or form fitting around her body because she just had an appendectomy. Becca got some health issues. Becca has been going through some things um, health wise and I'm sorry, but Austin doesn't give me mature enough 
to like, I feel like sympathize with that. Something about Austin still gives very much frat boy, um, immature, inconsiderate. So we'll see how that goes. But she ends up picking out this dress that she said made her look like she was from the Renaissance and not Beyonce's. But like more Renaissance fair. Okay. So meanwhile, with Austin, he tries on this very, I thought, very, very nice green tux. He said he felt like a leprechaun in it. I said, oh. So he ends up going with the black tux instead. We then pan over to Claire and Cameron, and they are doing their wedding um, dress and tuck shopping. She feels that her goals have gotten in the way of her finding a relationship or finding something serious. They are gonna be the boring couple. That's what I wrote here on these notes. When by the end of the episode, I feel like Claire is gonna be a problem. I feel like Claire is gonna be the villain of the season. I feel like Claire is gonna run Cameron ragged. That's how I'm feeling about that. So Cameron, I said Cameron don't have no male friends. He brought his like his you know his pseudo mom that or over here his pseudo mom that he brought in because. Y'all know his family is still over in, he said in New Zealand? His family is still over in New Zealand. Um, I mean, you ain't got, like, why didn't your cousin come? Just a question, questions I have. So, Claire gets emotional. Um, and because, you know, she it's a big moment full of things going on. And one of her sisters was like, this is huge. You just found the one. The one what? The not the one I know you don't mean she found the one as in a man. No, girl, you must have never seen the show. There's like a 13% success rate. She didn't find the one nothing. <laughs> no, she didn't find the one nothing. We then pan over to Lauren and Orion. Okay, so she hopes that her husband is big enough. To keep her warm. I said, <laughs> girl, you probably thicker than that man is. <laughs> Orion is so slim. He's slender, y'all. He about that thick, okay? So, he, um, she feels that physical attraction can grow, right? So, the physical is not super, super important to her. She said, you can definitely go from a four to a five. She said, but from a two to a five, not so much. But I think it's good that, and he, I think he said something similar as well. They're coming into this not a thousand percent focused on the physical. A very, very key important part of this show working is these people not being able to come in and realize you might get somebody that is not your typical aesthetic that you go for. Remember how, what was that man's name, Ryan? Couldn't take the fact that Brad had red hair. I've never dated a girl with red hair. I've never dated a girl with red hair. He just couldn't take life because that heifer had red hair. If you can get past stuff like that, this will work. This will work. So we're at the wedding or before the wedding, she sends him a flask that had a shot in it. Um, and it was some rum that she bottled 20 years ago in Puerto Rico. Now. Please tell me I heard wrong, okay? I know she said she bottled it herself. Did she mean she bottled it in the flask? Because she's definitely 31 years old. So unless down in Puerto Rico, they are letting y'all, you know, at the tender preteen age, at, at a tween, they letting y'all, you know, bottle, <laughs> bottle the devil's juice. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But that's what I thought I heard. He sends her some turquoise. Um, he wrote this letter about how um, it's some, something symbolic with his ancestors. She feels that they are now connected because he mentioned his ancestors. And she talked about her ancestors. So now we one in the spirit. I said, girl, the, the, the things that y'all find. I mean, hey, don't let me be a, um, a Debbie Downer. Don't let me be a negative Nancy on your parade. Go for it, girl. So they go in and Lauren's family said that she is an original masterpiece. She always stands out. She's a beautiful little nerd that is outspoken, bold, and fearless. Orion's family said that he's a jack of all trades that can refinish a car, build a shelf, 
um, and said that his culture is very important to him because he was raised in the matriarchy. Matriarchy. <laughs> this is probably why I should edit matriarchy. Um, he believes that women are strong and he will value her independence. You can tell they have some physical attraction to each other. Like they're smiling. They're happy. She complimented his earrings. He looked, you know, you know, he was cool with it. So I, you know what? I kind of like them together. Not going to lie, I kind of like them together. We're going to give me to the honeymoon, but this might be the couple that we see her for. It, it might be. So they both clearly really like each other. They both kept saying, you know, the experts did good. They did good. So, like, we, we got a little something, something merging with them. He asks to, ki asks to kiss her. She, you know, gives him the permission and she was making it seem like he tongued her down. It was very much given, you know, but hey, she enjoyed it. She, she had a little tingle or something going through it because she seemed to enjoy it. Okay. So then we get Michael. I'm going to tell y'all now, we saw way too much of Michael. I'm sorry for Michael's situation. I feel bad for him, but I kind of feel like we don't need a play-by-play -play of what happened. The moment that that heifer left, that should have been the end of seeing Michael, but let's talk about it. So we're getting Michael's real wedding now. And this is why, this is why so many people jumped ship from the season or from the show this season, right? Because they started off with this clear dramatization, whether it was um, they made Michael stand back up and do it or whatever the case, but it was clearly a dramatization that was unnecessary if y'all were going to show this season. One thing, who was I watching? Was it LaVita Rosa? And she was saying how Pastor Cal was pegging this season as full of drama and horror. What? Why? 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 Why is that? I, I don't understand why Married at First Sight leads with that. Yeah, we watch for a little bit of drama. We're human. But overall, we want to see some Woody and Amani's too. We want to see somebody. <laughs> we want to see somebody work, right? Nonetheless, we um we get to see him, you know, get ready with his friends and stuff. I like Michael's hair. You know, he got a little little V in the back, little little part, little situation. His bayang is bayanging. So I like Michael's hair. We then see that he is dressed very nice, very casual. Well, I won't say casual, very formal, nice black velvet jacket. Um, he had on the pink bow tie. That's a little much, but you know, nice touch. I like it. The bride sent him the sword and the crown. So I guess the real question we should be asking is why? Why did she send this man a sword and a crown, right? What is the, what is the significance between her sending him a sword and a crown? So he only put the shit on because she sent it over. <laughs> and y'all y'all called him everything but a child of God for putting on that stuff. When, she, when this heifer sent it over, and then on top of it, he didn't even really have it on during the ceremony, okay? So... I guess I would like to know why she's allowed to be edited out. Now, I saw on Twitter that somebody said that I guess she did not sign a waiver to consent to being filmed. Uh, you know, it's a thousand and one different reasons, excuses, scenarios, conspiracy theories, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I think at the end of the day, either you show her or you don't show anything at all. I don't see the purpose in showing Michael get left at the altar, right? So she walks in. They don't show her family. They don't show nothing. All we see is the back of her. She's a brunette. That's the most that we can say. It even sounded like they dubbed over her voice as to not give her voice away. That's how crazy, because y'all know the internet is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, the way that AI is now, y'all have heard this girl's voice. Y'all have been able to find her and read her for filth. So, she comes up, and 
she um she said, I'm sorry, I don't think I can marry a stranger. He lets her know that, you know, he respects her decision. And she calls him, she says, wow, what an amazing guy. And she walks out. I said, is this, is the voice AI? So then she walks out. A part of me thinks that they left this in for, uh, like, they thought it would pull in ratings, right? Another part of me thinks that this is fake. Another, a huge part of me thinks, a huge part of me thinks that this was some type of dramatization. I think they set Michael up that they never planned on. Well, I guess, I don't know. I don't know if they never planned on giving Michael a, a, a wife or whatever the case. I know y'all done, everybody's talking about, I guess he gets another wife or something. I don't know. People keep saying that he gets a new wife or I don't know what's going on. Y'all know I try not to get into like outside stuff during the, during the season. Um, but it makes me wonder if, like, did y'all do this to him on purpose? Was there really a, another girl? Were these all paid actors? Were these extras? Because this this is craziness. This is pure, unadulterated craziness for absolutely no reason. For absolutely no reason. So we then get into Becca and Austin, okay? Time to have a wedding, <laughs> So, back in Austin. So, um, his friends are asking him if he's ready to be 100% committed. Austin said he don't know. N n n what? You're getting married. What do you mean you don't know? So, I, a red flag. <laughs> red flag. And his friends are telling him, no, no, you don't wait to see if you like her to do that. When you go into this, you need to be 100% committed. He said he's going to do his very mess. Fuck boy. Fuck boy vibes already. She sends him over like a little reusable camera because, you know, she's a photographer. I would have thought she would have gave him like a Polaroid or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I even have one of those like little Polaroid that, you know, you take your picture, and then right away it spits out, you know, one of the new age ones. But she just, I don't know what, what she sent over, but I, it makes sense. He sent her over some perfume, and lo and behold, it's the perfume that she wears every day. Quiet as is kept, it just looked like some Marc Jacobs Daisy, and if that's what that is, a lot of the heifers wear that. I don't <laughs> because so many of y'all wear it. There are like three or four cents that I just feel like uh, the average woman has, right? Marc Jacobs Daisy is definitely one of them. And it kind of looked like the Marc Jacobs Daisy box to me. Nonetheless, who is this guy? Who is this man that went to the counter at Macy's or to Nordstrom's and said, yo, what, what, what do all the hoes get? And that's what he, you know, whatever. So he, um, one of his friends is, is the flower man and he's walking around with the rose petals, but it looked like he's passing out little miniature bottles of, of essential oils and perfume. Way too much going on for me. We didn't get any clarification as to what is going on with that. Why are we passing out essential oils at this wedding? Y'all don't have no kids in y'all family that could have came down with the with the flowers? Sure. You know what? Who are me to judge, okay? Who are me to judge, right? So we then see um, Austin hating as mama. She comes around and she don't come around a little bit. She said, I can't tell you what to do. No, you can't because he's grown. <laughs> so you either going to be supportive or you're not. She comes in, good vibes everywhere, right? She's a, she's a lot. She's excited. His family seems to like her. She waving to everybody. I said, okay, this is going great, right? This is going good. So he starts crying. I said, not you crying? You know what I always say? If your husband is not crying as you walk down the aisle, that man don't love you. <laughs> I saw, I, there was the, the year before COVID, 2019, I went to six 
weddings, okay? Four of them were family. My brother, two cousins, and, um, oh, I guess three cousins. That was a cousin, too. My brother, three cousins. Every single groom was up there, damn near ugly crying and snotting. That's how I want you to look when I come down. I don't want you to be up there Rico Suave. I want you to be Viola Davis crying as I'm, <laughs> as I'm walking down. I nigga, prove you love me. But he starts crying, and I was like, look at this. Okay, okay, Austin. So Becca's family said that she is smart and strong-willed. Being late is a personality trait. To me, that's a red flag because that means that you don't respect others or their time. I am a very, very punctual person. Very punctual. I'm not getting nowhere late. So that, you know, when people say that they're habitually late and they laugh about it, I don't think it's funny <laughs> at all. I don't think it's funny at all. I don't think it's cute that people think it's cute to be late. But different strokes for different folks. Um, she said to tell her how often her beauty, how tell her, tell her often, well, ooh, Lord, come on, Rose head. Tell her often how beautiful her brain is, and you'll find out she's a sex vixen. I said, oh, you know, I've said this before. I really wish they family and friends would stop bringing up their sex life because that's weird. Like, if you're telling my stranger husband about me, don't be like Tammy's a, a freaking, uh, you know, uh, or what is it? Why can't I think of it? Something in the, freaking the sheets, geeking the streets, freaking the sheets. D don't tell my new husband that. Why can't I think of it right now? Freaking the sheets, freaking the streets, geeking the streets, freaking. Y'all are telling me in the comments, but like I just don't like that they do that all the time. <laughs> His mama, not please. <laughs> any any part of coming around that Austin's mama did, she lost all semblance of that when she heard sex vixen. She looked utterly disgusted. Austin's family said that he is a typical Coloradan. Um, he's into outdoor adventures, so damn it, you gonna be too. Said he is always late. Again, she was like, we're never gonna get anywhere on time. That's not cute, Becca. It's not cute. So his top trait is his loyalty. He's had the same group of friends since he was a kid, and he is dedicated to making those around him feel cared for. Awesome. Good job, Austin. So she wants to do the Jewish tradition of breaking the glass, so she must be Jewish. And then they, you know, yell out, Mazel Tov. And then he asks if he can kiss her. It's always just a very nice just mwah, chef's kiss when they say, can I? Do you mind? Do you want to? Instead of just going in and swallowing her face. Okay. Back to Michael. Why? So we get Michael saying he's embarrassed and sad. You should be. You should be. You should be embarrassed. You should be sad. We didn't need to hear you say that. We pan back over to Lauren and Orion. So they are outside talking. They're vibing with each other. They seem to have a good rapport. No one seems nervous. The conversation is flowing. Um, she asked him how old he is. He's 27. She's 31. She said, I've never dated somebody younger than me, but shoot, I've never, never married a stranger. So we're going to ride this thing out together. She asked his zodiac sign. He said, I am a Sagittarius. He was like, and I know it. I'm a sag, sag Libra. So he's a Sagittarius sun. Sagittarius moon, Libra rising. I'm a Libra. I would love to know what my sun, moon, and rising are. If you know how to do that or how I can tell, please let me know. I want to know, like, okay, so my birthday is September 27th. Or do y'all need to know, like, the time? <laughs> I, like, I want to know, like, what my sun, moon, and rising are is so if you know how to do that let me know y'all um and then she is apparently the exact same thing i said y'all got the same birthday don't you have to have the same birthday for that to for that to happen nonetheless 
Um, he then explains the significance of his hair being up. She seemed really into it. I think that he like really loved the fact that she asked, was it significant? She doesn't seem turned away by the fact that, you know, he's wearing the earrings and which I'm like 99% sure is probably a cultural thing for the wedding. Like she seems to be very, very into it. She said that her biggest fear is that he wouldn't like her aesthetically. It wouldn't be like, that's not what I'm looking for. She said, but I walked past the mirror and I'm a bad bitch. And he was like, right. They, they like each other. Okay. So far, so good, y'all. We have a couple to root for because I don't see it for Becca and Austin. <laughs> and Brendan and Emily, I don't, I really don't see it for them either. But Lauren and Orion, I think we might have something here. We might. We might. We get back over to Austin and Becca. They're out by the fire. She doesn't drink. I wonder if it's because of her medical condition or if she just doesn't drink but she says she don't mind if other people drink she said i will feed you shots all night not you being a pusher <laughs> don't be out here getting everybody drunk and then you all sober and clear-minded but that's a very that's good to know good for him to know um becca's a lot <laughs> becca is a lot i saw somebody post on Twitter that they're getting Lindsay and mock the shock vibes I hope it's not going to be that bad but Becca seems a lot while he's talking she's talking over him she's like picking shit off his face she's just maybe she's excited I think it's just you know nerves and good anxiety and everything just bah, coming out but mm, I don't know y'all we get Michael again and I, I like to have screamed I'm sorry Michael I think you're very handsome I think you're probably a very cool guy I don't want to see you no more sir this is it two episodes is all we have in us two episodes is all we have in us so Michael Gills goes back reads the letter that this that this that this, that she left okay she left him a letter saying that he, you know, she hopes that he fills up his adventure book and he seems like a great guy and all the stuff that he sent over to her, she gave right the fuck back. I said, <laughs> his friend is like, can we keep the sword? Why do you want to keep it? It's just going to remind you of your failed almost marriage. But nonetheless, this is it. Michael was in the car. He's reflecting as if he is like, Michael is reflecting about this. And he's getting so much camera time. You'd have thought that, like, this is decision day for him. <sighs> so then we get Claire and Cameron. Did we post their picture yet? I think so. So then we get Claire and Cameron. Okay, a little refresher. Um, she's emotional thinking about her brother not being there. Remember, she is a quadruplet. And her brother um, took his own life. They haven't said how long ago, but it's still very, very fresh for her, at least. So she sent him some fabric. She apparently is Scottish. So she sends him some fabric because she wants him to incorporate it into the, the wedding. He just has to do a little handkerchief with it. He was like, I have to Google what to do with it. Put it in your, and put it in your pocket. That's all you got to do, babe. Put it right there. Um, he gives, her, he gives her a stuffed animal that's a kiwi bird. Now, I didn't Google it because I thought we could do this together, but I believe the kiwi bird is, um, I feel like the kiwi bird might be New England's national, I mean, uh, New Zealand's national bird. It is. Okay. So the Kiwi is New Zealand's national bird. But see, she don't she don't know that. <laughs> Cause that would kind of be a clue that he's from New Zealand. Um, but she didn't know that. So when you just give a random stuffed animal like that, it's it's a little odd. But the way that she was kind of like, uh about it, I said, Oh, Claire is gonna be a problem. And that's too bad, because I think I, I like I don't mind her, but I think in in unison she's gonna be a problem. So 
<laughs> she's outside with her her parents. I think that was her dad. She's outside with her parents, and they're talking. And it bothered me how her dad kept like kissing and brushing up against her hair. You're crushing her curls. <laughs> You're crushing her curls. Her father had just no regard for her hair. Meanwhile, inside her sisters were like, you're the groom. Yep, that's why he's at the altar. <laughs> that's why he's up there. Um, So then we'll get the final wedding next week. And then hopefully we breeze through these receptions. And I'm hoping that we at least get on the plane. Okay, on the plane to get to the honeymoons. The season is still going faster than than before. So for us to already really get through all the weddings and we're on episode two, that is phenomenal. That is absolutely great. So let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Let me know what you guys thought about all the couples. Um, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and thumbs up the video and I will catch you guys in the next one. I'll probably come back tomorrow. I'm gonna watch the after show. If there's anything worth talking about, I'll do a video for the after show tomorrow. Peace.